Blessings, beloved gods and goddesses. I am Empress Nandi, ordained metaphysician, certified angel therapist, soul healer and teacher, and intuitive. And as always, it is my honor and privilege to serve you. Today, we'll be discussing Dr. Sebi, Honduran herbalist, who has made incredible strides in healing. He figured out how to heal chronic diseases such as HIV, AIDS, and cancer. But before we get started, I invite all new listeners to please subscribe, like, and share these videos. And to those of you who are already subscribed, I love, honor, and appreciate you. I thank you for being a part of our Awakening family. Dr. Sebi is a pathologist, herbalist, biochemist, and naturalist. He has studied and personally harvested herbs in North America, Central and South America, Africa, and the Caribbean. Dr. Sebi developed a unique approach and methodology to healing the body with herbs that is firmly rooted in 30 years of experience. Dr. Sebi says, all disease is caused by mucus buildup produced by excessive acidity in the body. An alkaline electric diet can reverse all disease. With no formal education and no medical degree, Dr. Sebi has managed to heal the incurable. His journey clearly demonstrates that genius is inherent. Dr. Sebi was born Alfredo Bowman on November 26, 1933 and Spanish Honduras. He is a self-educated man. Taught by nature herself, he never had a formalized education. He took cues on being obedient to the process of life from his beloved grandmother, Mama Hay. His early days of play and observation by the river and in the forest, coupled with the guidance from his grandmother, afforded Dr. Sebi his foundation to be obedient to the truth of nature in his later life. Sebi came to the United States as a self-educated man diagnosed with asthma, diabetes, impotency, and obesity. After unsuccessful treatments with conventional doctors and traditional Western medicine, Sebi was led to an herbalist in Mexico. Finding great healing success from all his ailments, he began putting his lifelong knowledge to use, creating natural vegetable cell food compounds geared for intercellular cleansing and the revitalization of all the cells that make up the human body. Dr. Sebi has dedicated over 30 years of his life to develop a unique methodology that he could only obtain through years of empirical knowledge. Inspired by the personal healing experience and knowledge he gained, he began sharing the compounds with others, which gave birth to Dr. Sabi's cell food. Dr. Sabi rose to cult-like fame, pushing a simple dietary premise, that food is alkaline for the body, and dead foods kill your body's natural ability to heal and regenerate. By eliminating what Dr. Sebi considered toxic foods, like meat, poultry, seafood, all processed or synthetic items, alcohol, sugar, fried food, and iodized salt, the body could begin detoxing. Replacing these foods with plain ripe fruit, non-starchy vegetables, especially leafy greens, raw nuts and nut butters, and grains like quinoa, rye, and kamut promotes the body's natural healing property. In doing so, he cured several patients of AIDS, cancer, diabetes, 
and blindness. The notoriety of Dr. Sebi grew stronger in 1989 after the self-taught herbalist ran ads in the Amsterdam News, the Village Voice, and the New York Post noting that AIDS has been cured. The story goes that the New York State Attorney General and New York City Department of Consumer Affairs told Dr. Sebi to remove the ads. He refused and was arrested. The charges levied against him included practicing medicine without a license, selling products not approved by the Food and Drug Administration, and fraudulently claiming that he could cure AIDS and other diseases. Dr. Sebi versus the New York Supreme Court. 2,781 cases had come before the New York Supreme Court and lost. Yet, Dr. Sebi, who was accused of practicing medicine without a license, selling products not approved by the Food and Drug Administration, and fraudulently claiming that he could cure AIDS and other diseases, won his case overwhelmingly. He was asked to present one patient of each malady that he claimed to have cured. He presented 77 patients with medical documentation of their before and after status. These cases were verified by a second medical doctor. And the legend of Dr. Sebi was born. Tasha K at I Am Unwine with Tasha K interviewed Ma, Dr. Sebi's first wife of 30 years, and his daughter, Usha, regarding the documentary being made by Nipsey Hussle about Dr. Sebi's life, legacy, and death. They discussed the very beginning of Dr. Sebi's legacy, how he went to Mexico to be cured of his own ailments, how he and Ma, his first wife, started formulating the original herbal cures for locals free of charge, his heartfelt dedication to the healing of humanity, and the chaos that has ensued with the sale of remedies bearing his name, but not his original formulations. Dr. Sebi was heartbroken at the betrayal leading to his arrest and ultimately his death. Dr. Sebi did not die of naturally contracted pneumonia, but we knew this already. Dr. Sebi was extremely healthy at 83 years old when he entered prison on false accusations. Dr. Sebi did not all of a sudden develop pneumonia unless they injected him with it. He was murdered because he was a threat to the system. He was a threat to Big Pharma. He was a threat to the physician's ability to keep pimping people for dollars. Dr. Sebi was on a two-week fast preceding his death, aware that his food was being poisoned. According to information obtained by his daughter, Usha, someone had come forward to confess their participation in the murder of Dr. Sebi. The investigation is ongoing. Because the one thing you want to do is to love. And that love should begin with you. Once you love you, you love the whole world. It's easy. It's delicious to love everybody and everything. Alfredo Bowman, widely known as Dr. Sebi, dedicated his life to love. After experiencing himself the great healing success of a Mexican herbalist, he prepared to heal as much people as he could creating natural cell vegetation cell food compounds for over 30 years to cure their ailments. He constantly spoke about love, for he viewed healing as an act of love. You see, I had asthma, and I had diabetes. I was impotent. I was obese. I was angry. Very, very angry. But a Mexican is so grounded that he took your brother, Sebi, and healed him. And now, that Mexican prepared me for you. After decades of success in Los Angeles, in 2005, Dr. Sebi left his business in the hands of his daughter, Zave Chapman. 
his wife Patsy Williams, and Neela Collins while he conducted research to develop new herbal products in Honduras. Would you just trust those that you had given so much love to? Nine years went by before he started suspecting those that he had trusted with his company. Once he returned to LA, he found Nina and Patsy had taken over his business with the help of his own daughter, Zave Chapman. Never had he imagined that the ones that he loved would conspire to betray him. He immediately filed a lawsuit against them and the companies they created to sell products to his clients under his name. Accusing them of things such as wrongful appropriation of business, fraud, false advertising, conversion, and defamation. In such lawsuit, he explains the events and the way they unfolded. I align myself with women that are bad. I have some rotten ones around me now. My wife, my ex-wife, my manager, my daughter. She even tried to humiliate him by wanting him to admit that he had no medical training, that there was no cure for AIDS, no cure for herpes, and that he had not developed any formulas. Zave, Patsy, aka Miss Dr. Sebi, if you contend that Dr. Sebi didn't create any formulas, then who did? You? In their efforts to discredit their father's products for the sake of their business, while using his image for profit, Zave and Usha, together with their partner Sharon Ross from the UK, created an elaborate hoax to make people believe that Dr. Sebi's hair products could have terrible side effects. This shit got me fucked up. Look at my motherfucking face. Do you see this bullshit? This motherfucking shit right here. This hair follicle fortifier motherfucking shit. Fortify my eyes motherfucking clothes. Fortify my goddamn scalp to look like this shit. You know what I'm saying? I understand that it was at my own risk, but goddamn it, you got three ingredients up in this motherfucker. The least you can do is write down some side effects for these motherfuckers. The videos were thought to be true by many. However, Interesting connections appear once you look into Jermal Brown's history. Jermal Brown posted the first video on March 16th, more than a month after announcing Usha Bowman's being a part of the administration of the organization he seems to be a part of, a not-for-profit organization named Bolingo, which is chaired by Sharon Ross. Together, they fabricated the story to hurt Dr. Sebi's legacy, reputation, and tricking people into buying their fake products instead. The hypocrisy shown by Dr. Sebi's close ones, trying to profit from hurting his real products while using his name to sell their fake products, is a continuation of betrayal that started from once they took what he built and left him alone. Where were his loved ones while he was in jail? Where was Zave Usha, Patsy, and Nina? Sebi's story is a sad one, one of love and betrayal. So it's about love, like Miss Lily Watkins said. It's about love, okay? And that love starts with you. He was 83 years old. After his death, his daughter Zave Chapman, the same he accused of betraying him, opened up a business with Usha Bowman, Sebi's daughter, and their partner Sharon Ross, selling products that try to imitate and compete with Dr. Sebi's. They have used social media to show love, respect, and appreciation for him and his work, giving the image of themselves and their company as being a continuation of his mission.
However, none of these messages can be found prior to his death. On May 28, 2016, Dr. Sebi was arrested at the Juan Mangel Galvez International Airport in Honduras for carrying some $37,000 in cash. He was released pending a court hearing only to be rearrested June 3rd by the Honduran FBI and charged with money laundering. Dr. Sebi remained in custody until August 6th when he was rushed to a local hospital reportedly suffering from complications of pneumonia. Dr. Sebi died en route. Dr. Sebi's arrest records have not been released, so it remains unclear as to why he was arrested, released, and then rearrested for carrying so much cash, since it wouldn't have been unusual for a healer who had treated several high-profile clients who reportedly included Michael Jackson, Lisa Left Eye Lopez, John Travolta, and Eddie Murphy to have a large amount of money on him. Lopez was actually in Honduras visiting Dr. Sebi when she died in a car accident. They all conspired against me. Dr. Sebi continued working on his mission to help others, distancing himself from those who had betrayed him working hand-in-hand -hand with his friend and disciple, Pablo Medina, with whom he opened up a new company and regained power. I worked with a young man named Pablo. Pablo Medina. Pablo Medina is a Mexican. He belongs to a tribe known as the Huichol. You're going to be the recipient now of some new medicine that Pablo put together. So yes, you're going to get the best compound I've ever made in my life. He died two years later in a jail in Honduras. He was imprisoned and accused of money laundering, along with Pablo, who had traveled with Dr. Sebi for him not to travel alone. Pablo took jail time for Sebi for five months, two months with him and three months after he passed away. They were later found innocent, but Sebi had passed away already. Someone that was special to the community, and I think the truth deserves to be heard. There are, have been speculations about his death, and I've spoken to Usha about it, and I asked her, and I want to ask you here, and whatever your answer is, it's okay. There, the reports came in after he was arrested and locked up that he died of pneumonia. Now, of course, a lot of people aren't believing that because, you know, Dr. Sebi was a man that a lot of people wanted they wanted to take over. They wanted the money, the notoriety, everything that he had worked for. Mm -hmm. And so is it true that he died from pneumonia? Because you said you spoke to your father the night before he died. I spoke to him about three days before he had passed. Okay. You know, and um, I wouldn't be able to say from that conversation that he passed from pneumonia. Um, no, that's not my belief. Speaking of, but we can't attest to that because we weren't part of that part of his journey. What were his last words to you on that phone call when he was locked up? I know someone's trying to kill me, so I refuse to eat the food in here. I'm not touching this food. That's why I'm fasting. Shit. <laughs> A lot of this. I'm sorry, Mommy. I'm, oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm so Can sorry. Some, it's in the back room, some tissue. <sighs> She's emotional at this moment because a lot of this I don't share. A lot of this I don't talk to people about. I don't even tell my mother. I don't talk to my sisters and brothers about it. I've gathered a lot of information since his passing and before his passing because I had canceled my whole trip just to go to try to assist him. And unfortunately, I, those things, I couldn't end up going. And I, I feel terrible. Um, I will always feel I'm not a person that has carries guilt, but I know that. Um, so he wasn't coughing. He didn't have problems breathing when you spoke to him three days prior to the report of his death. He was cold. And so, yes, there was a cough. I did hear a cough. Um, OK. He but was he was cold. He was like he was freezing in there and he couldn't take it anymore. He said he had been on a two week fast at the time. And so he was feeling low and he needed something. And you can tell, you know. Um, 
but I wouldn't be able to attest that he died of pneumonia. Besides, we had a confession, and so no, I don't believe that. It's, you had a confession? Absolutely. Absolutely. A, a confession as to like how he actually died, or as someone... To how someone participated in his death. But we don't want to speak names, times, things of that nature, because it's an ongoing investigation right now. And I'm, I'm very happy that that person came to us to let us know what, what their part was in it and why. And um, well, we appreciate that. Um, but it's, a, it's an ongoing investigation as to what happened. And no, it wasn't pneumonia. Wow. It may have been That's the symptom idea. of from what was done, no doubt, but there was intrusive factors. This is the first time I'm hearing this. I mean, we've had conversations, and you, she would not speak of this. And I, and I expressed to her that I would ask on the air, but I didn't know that she was going to uh, say this. And this is, um, wow. So... As as rumors were uh, spread about him being murdered, this was a murder. In my book. Okay. And my speaking on it now, it's hard to believe that. It's hard to believe that, you know, that that kind of thing. But there's, with this, with this investigation, there's evidence. So... It's okay. still hard to believe, and it's still, like, it's still so hurting. It's just painful. The whole thing is painful. It's real painful, like the kind of pain you just can't even believe exists. It's kind of every time just the thought of it, and that way for Sabi, you know, like, okay, why? Why would you? But that's what we always say, why, right? And those people, whoever it is. And interesting have... enough, he was locked up with another person. I want to say, was it Pablo or, if I'm not mistaken, and he was released, uh, I guess a week later, mistaken, and he was released, uh, I guess a week later or a couple of days later after Dr. Sabi had passed. Had passed that is correct. Just walked out. like So it was literally two weeks of those two being locked up together. And Dr. Sabi was stripped of his cash and every single thing. And we saw the video of him being taken away. And he was on the back of the truck. And he looked, you, you could tell he was just, he was just over it, mm -hmm. what was going on. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the video of him, what it looked like to me, a, appearing to kind of call out those who were, uh, uh, I guess, tr betraying him. Yeah. It's a very sad video to see. It's a very sad thing to see because you can see that he was broken. You can see that he was hurt, you know. Not broken as a man, but his heart was broken because he has a big heart. He's like me. When you're betrayed and you find out someone is doing something behind your back that you have no